Macadone Rose is a really strong pigment. Um, it's a beautiful hot pink. You can't fake it with anything else. It's just a colour all its own. It's perfect. If you want to paint flowers, it's the colour that you need for um, fuchsias, bougainvillea, all those kind of hot flower pinks. And there's really no substitute for this pigment. It's, it's unique. You can see that in thicker areas it's got quite red tones to it and when spread more thinly the blue notes begin to come through so it's, it is quite a cool red but you can make very hot pinks with it if you want to. So I'm going to just try it with lots of other colours to show you the range of things that we can do with this fantastic red. To begin with let's add a little bit of titanium white just to get a feel for the colour we're using. So with titanium white, it makes a fairly cool purpley pink. Really rich, tons of tinting power in this, very strong colour. So that's it just with plain white. If we try it with a little of the new lead tin yellow, you'll see it can retain quite a lot of warmth to make quite a red peach colour. Almost crimson like if you add it to something with a tint of yellow. So there it is, a little bit warmer, quite a red colour. It makes a fantastically vibrant purple mixed with ultramarine blue. Ultramarine already has a purplish bias to it, so we get a really rich royal velvet purple if we mix it with ultramarine. That's a lovely dark value as well. With it being a transparent colour, this quinacridone, we can get a really deep dark colours. If I try it just with a little bit of white there, you can see the purple coming out. That's a lovely mid-purple. With a bit more blue, we can push it more towards a violet, lavender sort of colour. So it makes lovely clean, crisp purples when we need it to. If I try it with a thalo blue, we'll get a slightly more dirty purple due to the green bias of this blue. Thalo blue, another really powerful pigment. So we get a slightly softer purple there, a little bit more neutral with a bit of white again. We might be able to see the difference between the two. There's not a massive difference there, but this purple just has a little bit less punch. If I put a bit more thalo, you can see it's more of an indigo slightly softer colour. I'm also now going to try it with some less predictable colours if you like. So we'll give it a go with some raw sienna to see how it behaves with it with a soft earth colour and what it does is it lends it a really warm red so we're losing the blue notes and just retaining the hot red there to get a really rusty autumnal burnt orange brown. With an Indian yellow, also a transparent colour, I would expect a pretty vibrant rusty crimson. Wow, that's really strong, that's lovely. Very rich colour there. Very hot orange. If I add a little bit more yellow Gosh, these are fantastic colours. Very powerful. But I'm sure we could soften it if I try a little of that lead tin yellow in there to keep that warmth. We can see that softening back to a really lovely burnt orange colour. And if I try softening that with a little of the amethyst purpley colour. We're heading back to a brown again, but richer for being still transparent. If I add it to the neutral grey, we'll see how it behaves in a softer format. So with a, with a more neutral, cooler colour, there's a lot more blue coming through. Seeing a much cooler colour coming out there. Add a little more of the grey. That's really quite a soft neutral. It's amazing how it warms up and cools down so much depending on what I add it to. And let's try some Van Dyke Brown, see where that goes. 
This is a very cool black brown. I'll try it in there. That's quite interesting. Let's turn to a rich chocolatey, velvety brown, like the colour of dark chocolate. I may need to add a little bit of white there for you to see that colour. Ha! Huh. With the white it's gone quite purpley. That's a lovely soft mauve colour we're getting now. So it doesn't seem too difficult to desaturate it down to some cooler, more lilac-y tones there. And if we try it with the cobalt teal, sort of its complement really, it'll make a really rich bluish violet colour. And if I mix a slightly stronger green, say with some cadmium yellow and a little phthalo, we'll make a really bright green and see what happens here. Add that quinacridone in there and we've got a fairly warm mid-brown. There's such a richness to it. Remarkable how many di different directions we can go with one colour. If I add some warm light yellow to that, we should be heading into more natural earthy colours again. Quite cool again. It seems when I add lighter colours to it, it cools off quite a lot. So quite a soft earthy grey. It's a really fun colour to play with. It goes in lots of different directions. Fantastic pigment, so much potential. It's a really good one to play with.